What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel CTS Gaming Circle Triangle Square. I am Corey and be sure to check out the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash CTS games. Everybody knows that Sony's pretty much the most successful company when it comes to video games. The PlayStation 2 is the greatest selling console of all time. However, before Sony became that successful, they failed. Not once, not twice, not three times but four times. Four times Sony failed before PlayStation 1 even existed, or the original PlayStation. In the late 1980s, Sony partnered with Philips to create the CD-based console, the CDI. It was priced at $700, which was really expensive because in today's market, that would be $1,400. That is just mind boggling for a system that had pretty much no games. And I mean that, no games. In fact, Sony and Philips got together to create a system and the only games they had were Nintendo based. They had three Zelda games and one Mario game. And those games were cited among critics as being the worst games ever made by Nintendo. Isn't that crazy to think about? Sony actually partnered with Panasonic on this major flop. Well, it was a complete flop and failure. And not only that, the console was originally cited to be an add-on for the Super Nintendo, much alike the Sega CD for the Sega Genesis. The CDI did sell 570,000 units, mostly before 1994, because after that sales slowed down tremendously and then they discontinued it. And it had 133 games, which is a decent amount, but they were all pretty much crappy. Except, of course, the four games from Nintendo, which were cited by critics as being crappy as well. So the CDI was pretty much a complete flop. Did Sony learn from this? Definitely. But where did they go from there? Sony was basically the brainchild of the Sony Computer Entertainment Engineer and then turned CEO Chairman Ken Kutaragi. He was the guy who was pretty much responsible for the PlayStation. And he was truly inspired by gaming when his daughter used to play Nintendo or Famicom back in the 80s. Kutaragi got the chance to collaborate with Nintendo, creating their sound chip for the Super Nintendo. However, he didn't tell anybody at Sony about this. And oops, he almost lost his job. In fact, Nori Ogot, the president and CEO of the company at the time, is the reason why he still had a job and was able to finish that project with Nintendo, which was the highly regarded SP700 audio chip. And the complete success of this sound chip led Kutaragi down another path to partner and collaborate with Nintendo once again to create a CD-based add-on for the Super Nintendo. This was to be called the PlayStation or the Nintendo PlayStation. Sounds very odd, doesn't it? Very disturbing, to say the least. So at this time, Ken went to work to create this prototype for Nintendo as an add-on for their Super Nintendo, like I said, called the PlayStation. However, Nintendo was very skeptical to create a CD-based add-on or anything with a CD on it because of the traditional cartridges at the time. And even though there was a lot of skepticism on Nintendo's side due to the fact that it was a CD, Ken went on to produce this prototype. And then there is a famous misrepresented story which states that Nintendo backed out and terminated the deal with Sony and ended up striking a deal with Philips. That's where those four games for the CDI came into play. So Nintendo left its deal with Sony to go partner with Philips, who is indeed partnered with Sony. I'm very confused at this point, but nonetheless, that's exactly what happened in this situation. Oh, this is very confusing to think about. Still very determined, Ken Kutaragi decided it was time to speak with Sega. Considering the success of the Sega CD add-on for the Genesis, they wanted to speak with Sega about possibly partnering. In fact, Sony ImageSoft, which is a subsidiary of Sony Music, already made games. In fact, they made several games with Sega. It goes on as being quoted that they kept this a secret. The Sony Nintendo fiasco was public knowledge and was heavily publicized. They wanted to keep this private and on the down low until it was made official. For several months, Ken Kutaragi led the hardware development alongside Sega's president at the time, Hideki Sato. And the two parties went down a path exploring what a Sega slash Sony CD console would look like. Both Sony and Sega had cold feet here. In fact, Kutaragi came back and told many co-workers at Sony that he really didn't want to take the deal with Sega. And in fact, Sony at this point pulled out, unlike the previous deal with Nintendo, where they were turned 
terminated from the deal. Ken Kutaragi decided there's only one thing left to do at this point, and that's make our own console and go about this on our own. I mean, after a failure with Nintendo, Sega, Philips, it was time to do this on their own. They were just going to do it alone and jump right into the console market. Ken and his team went to speak with president and CEO of Sony, Noria Oga, which is the guy that saved him from his job earlier. To drive his message home with Noria Oga, he reminded him of how Nintendo screwed them out of the deal and asked Noria Oga, are you going to let them get away with this? And Norio responded with, go for it, do it, make it happen. Norio Ogo gave Ken Kutaragi the green light for the PlayStation based on the fact that he wanted to go after Nintendo for what they had done to him. And isn't it ironic how Nintendo turned Sony down, yet only a few years later, Sony was the leading giant in the console war and would continue to do so for the next 24 years. In fact, Nintendo has not outsold Sony since the PlayStation launched. Kind of crazy to think about. They turned Sony down, so Sony basically went and created their own system and beat them into submission and outsold them for 24 years. Really funny to think about it like that, but it is the truth. What's really crazy about this whole scenario involving Sony and the birth of PlayStation is Sony didn't even know if they wanted to create a PlayStation 2 or a successor to the PlayStation 1. In fact, there was heavy talk about not doing it at all and that definitely would have been a bad decision one of the really crazy things that most people don't know is that sony actually met with microsoft twice in 1999 to discuss partnering up on a console or a successor to the original PlayStation. However, Microsoft backed out of this deal and Sony went on to create the PlayStation 2 and then only a few weeks later, Microsoft launched the Xbox, which sparked a rival between the two companies that spanned over the last 19 years, which pretty much still led to Sony beating Microsoft down every single year. So this begs the question, where would Sony be without its failures with Philips? Oops. Nintendo, Sega, and of course, Ken Kutaragi. It also sparks the other question of where Sony would be if Noria Oga hadn't saved Ken Kutaragi's job from the then CEO of Sony. There is so much history behind Sony and how they became the console giant they are today. It's really a testament to life on how failures build success. It's really crazy to think about how much Sony went through as a company with all these key people before the PlayStation even existed. So here we are 25 years later in almost 500 million units sold and it's safe to say that Sony's decision backed by Ken Kutaragi and Noria Oga to go it alone was a huge success. Thanks so much guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to smack that subscribe button, tap the bell notification, of course, smack the like button, comment below. What do you guys think of today's video? Be sure to check out the live streams and not only that guys, the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash CTS games. I'm in the game room right now and I also have a brand new streaming setup as you guys can see right now. So definitely check out those live streams. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see all of you on the next upload. Peace.